Hey what's up guys it's Leo and I'm back here again today with another setup tutorial. This time we will be setting up Material UI with the Next.js project that I've done in the last couple of videos. Um, if you want to follow along you can either go back and watch those videos and kind of set up the project that way or you can also go to the GitHub where I'll post um, in the description below the link for that and you can just clone down the repo so you can have like a starting place. What I'm going to do is I created a command line interface that just allows me to kind of create different types of projects um, using just that template CLI command. And I will be naming this one Material UI Next.js. And oops, I messed that up, but that's fine. We're going to go into there and we're going to open it up. If you guys want to see a video about how I made a kind of a, the command line interface for those templates, um, please let me know in the comment section below and I can go ahead and do that for you guys. So yeah, so we can get started now. Looking into the code base here, we can see that the project setup is very is the exact same as the um, setting up the Next.js video that I had um, prior to this one. And you can see it just kind of takes care of all the pre-configuration of like TypeScript, ESLint, Prettier, um, as well as having the Next and the React dependencies that we need. And then, so in order for us to get started, we first need to go ahead and install the material UI dependencies. So this is what this is going to do is it will install the material UI core library, which is a, the main component as well as the icons library so that you can use the material UI icons as well. There's another library in case you're interested in uh, researching it and it's uh, the material UI lab. And that kind of comes with things that aren't necessarily in the core library yet or like kind of experimental uh, components such as like alerts and I found that those are pretty useful sometimes as well. So after that is installed, the next thing we have to do is we need to install the Roboto font. The one thing, there's two different ways that we can go about doing this. Either we can use a, a CDN or we can go through and install it via NPM. The recommended uh, way to do it is using the CDN and that's coming from their documentation. The reason for that is that using the CDN, we can kind of specify here what um, exact variations of the fonts we want. So for example, Roboto font for Material UI will only use the 300, 400, 500, and 700 variations. And if you were to go through and install it via NPM, you could um, accidentally uh, load all the different variations that aren't even gonna be needed for Material UI. And again, I'm not exactly sure how the, um, the bundler for Next.js works internally, so I can't say with certainty that it will for sure not include those uh, extra fonts that, are just not, that aren't being used. So just out of safety, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and install it via the CDN. So what I'm gonna do first is in my notes here, I have kind of like a variation of this uh, app page. And here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a Next.js header and include the uh, viewport for just uh, content scaling and then include the Roboto font via the CDN. So there, that kind of just takes care of installing the font that will be used in our uh, material UI components. Um, next thing we can do is look into improving development startup times. So coming, looking at their documentation for this, you can see that there's a couple of uh, guides to minimize the bundle size. And why does that matter? So for example, here it talks about how um, without doing this, first of all, you're gonna have longer development startup time. So whenever you try to start up your development server using Yarn Dev, it's gonna take a little bit longer due to um, Material UI having to uh, import the entire library. And that can just save, it could save you like from startup times from like six seconds to two seconds, depending on the project size. So. We can go ahead and do that and it kind of gives you two different options on how to go about doing that and the way that I'm going to uh, configure mine is I'm going to add this extra Babel plugin import to my dev dependencies as well as modify the .babelrc file that we have and so first thing we got to do is we need to add the Babel plugin import um, dev dependency, which will allow us to um, do this kind of importing. And the next thing we got to do is modify the Babel RC 
So instead of it just having the presets, we will also include the Babel plugin import. And here you can see that it'll just go ahead and kind of do some different um, importing for the, the two different material UI dependencies that we um, imported, that being the core and the icons. Yeah, and so now that that is um, configured in our .babelrc file, we can go ahead and start testing around with different imports. And so we can do imports such as this with the nested imports from the material UI core library and not have to worry about bringing in the entire core library. We will only bring in the button and the typography components, which will, uh, when we start up our dev server, make it a lot quicker. So this is very useful for when it's very big projects and you don't wanna have to keep sitting around uh, waiting for your development server to start up. And so with that set up, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to customize a theme provider. And if you're not familiar with what that is, um, Material UI allows you to kind of create a consistent theme for your application. And this will allow us to maintain um, the same colors palette, um, different sizes, different typography styles, spacing. You can really set it up however you want. Um, the very basics that I'm going to set up for this tutorial is I'm just going to set up a theme provider with just a color palette. Um, and then you can also go to the documentation here at the material UI to kind of look at what variables can be configured and how to do that. So going back to um, the code here, what all we got to do is inside the styles folder, I'm going to create a theme.ts file. And within here, I am going to create a material UI theme and specify a palette. So it's pretty cool what it allows you to do with this palette. So pretty much what I'm doing here is I'm configuring a palette and I'm saying like, okay, the primary color for this palette is going to be for the main, it'll be um, whatever this color is. I'm not entirely sure. I think it's something like light blue, but the cool thing what you can do is um, you can also define light and dark as well as a contrast text for that specific palette color. But if you don't actually specify this, it will automatically kind of configure a light variable based off of whatever your main is. So it'll just change like the, the hue and the contrast to make it look like a lighter version of the main. So that's really cool. And then also I'll specify the typography just in case to make sure that the font family will be using the Roboto folder that um, Roboto library that we installed. So with the theme configured, in order for us to be able to start using it, we need to wrap our application in a theme provider. So similar to how I did it prior, I'm going to copy and paste um, what the application will look like with that kind of configured. And it's similar, we'll have the head still here, but you can see that the component now is actually wrapped in this theme provider and we provide the theme that we just defined into it, meaning that all of our components and all of our pages will be wrapped and have access to um, whatever we define in the theme, which is really cool and makes it super useful. The next thing we're also going to do is we're just gonna set up a CSS baseline and pretty much, like as it says here in this comment, it just pretty much just starts your uh, um, CSS and customization from scratch so that you don't have any kind of lingering CSS for some reason. So that's kind of cool. So you just have to add that within your theme provider before your component and then your component should be CSS good to go. And with the theme provider um, and everything set up, we can go ahead and kind of show how that's doing and make sure that it's working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a page here. And within this page, I am going to just set up a simple um, React function component page. So I'm going to first import FC from React. And this is React 17, so we don't need to necessarily import React. Um, it does sometimes get kind of annoying that uh, your auto imports won't be able to um, import all the missing imports if you don't import React. But since this is gonna be super quick, we can just do, um, just import FC without the actual React. So yeah, so we're going to create this sub page and within this sub page, we're gonna do two things. We're going to uh, return a normal button and a material UI button, just to show that it's actually um, configured differently. So let's go ahead and do that. So normal button is type equal to button. And we're going to make it say, I am boring as F. Um, and then the next 
button we're going to do is we're going to import the material UI button and we're going to make it a contained button and I am super cool and um, if we start up the development server we can kind of show how like they look a little bit different and if we go to our local host and we can see that it's uh, first going through the Babel configuration and um, loading and compiling the page we can when we go back to it and we go to the sub page we will see our two buttons so we have the boring button and the material UI button and now what we can do is to show how the theme is applied we could do something like color is equal to primary and that will actually change the color of the button to whatever we defined it so it'll take the main of the palette and use that and unfortunately you can't do something like primary dot light but what you can do is just specify um, like a CSS and JS or however you want to do your styling you can stylize it to in import the theme and then just do palette dot main dot light or palette dot primary dot main dot light and something like that and you can have access to the light variable which is really nice um, and yeah, so that's kind of set up and there's only one more thing we need to do and that is uh, with Next.js being it can be client side rendered or server rendered. It does run into some issues if you don't follow the next steps while you have server rendered pages. So for right now, as I showed, you can kind of see that everything's working fine. We have the button and it's getting the styling and everything is fine. but we start to experience some weird issues once we for example get uh, server side props and if you're not familiar with what this does is it just means that instead of rendering this page on the client side render it on the server side so we, we can get some props but for right now all i'm going to do here is i'm going to just return props and within here i'm going to just return a simple message and that message is going to be like f u um, and then what we got to do for TypeScript, let's just have an interface as sub props. And then here we can have the message is a string. And then what we can do is the modify our page to expect these props, destructure them in the parameters. And here we have access to that message and we can, um, make our cool material UI button uh, show that message instead of its normal text. So if I go back here, you can see that we're running into some strange material UI where the button doesn't really work. So what happens is, um, oh, that's right. Um, I was wondering why that's still working. So the problem is, isn't that necessarily when it's server side props like this, it's if you were to start following some of the themes in material UI or some of the um, examples that they have from, let's say, for example, if I go to material UI uh, button there, it gives you a bunch of different buttons that you can use. And it's super cool. You can kind of see the source code, right? And you can modify it to JavaScript or TypeScript. So pretty much what they use is they use this use styles kind of syntax to create the styles within the component. And then they just create a classes from it. And then you can define a class name to use that um, defined style. So the problem it's working right now because it's fine. But for some reason, when you add that kind of syntax, to um, a server side rendered page or component, you will begin to see some issues. So for example, if I import um, this simple um, use styles and what I'm going to then do is import the make styles and create styles from at material UI core slash styles. And it's suggested to, uh, if you do do the enhanced Babel RC that if you do install anything from the styles folder, like make styles and create styles to go ahead and actually import it directly from styles as opposed to importing it from the core. I'm not necessarily too sure why that is, but um, I remember reading that somewhere. And so we'll go ahead and instantiate the styling classes. And then what we're going to do is instead of having the color be that we are going to specify that this button will actually be using the classes dot root that we define up here, meaning that the background color should be red. And so if I open up a new browser and if I were to go back to that sub page, 
now you can see that there is no styling. So the background color of the button for some reason is not being picked up. And if we were to go through and inspect the error on the console, you can see here that the prop class name did not match the server, meaning that um, the server rendered class name and the client side rendered are two are coming back as two different values. Um, and that can be kind of annoying. And so what we can do to fix that is we can add some uh, a custom document page, which will allow us to uh, kind of set up how the rendering order should actually work. So the way to go about doing that, and you can look up the documentation of this as well, just typing in underscore the document TSX on what this does, but it pretty much just allows us to enhance our application. And we are going to uh, remove the theme, which that shouldn't be in there. And in here, we're pretty much just gonna set up some nice to haves for every single page, because this will always render as well. And here we're going to move our Roboto font CDN. And here is pretty much the most important part of this, and it's uh, the My Document Get Initial Apps. So pretty much what this is doing is that it's uh, making sure that the resolution order goes in this way. So it'll go by the server and then also with the server with error and then on the client, meaning that we shouldn't um, experience that kind of error anymore when it comes to uh, style sheets. And so we're going to instantiate some new server style sheets as well as get the render page and store it in the original render page uh, variable. And then with the context render page, we're going to specify that function to just be the original render page. And we are going to pass it in the enhance app um, Lambda function here where we just pass the app and the props and pretty much just the sheet will then be instantiated into the app. Um, we will then uh, wait and get the initial props based off of that into the initial props and just return that in our document with the styles looking like um, the way that in the correct order, the way that they should be. And since we modified our document, we can get rid of, um, oh wait, yeah, we can get rid of that. We have to keep uh, the viewport within the app, but we can get rid of that. And we can, one last change we need to do, and that is we need to add a use effect hook in order to remove the server side injected CSS. So after adding that uh, use effect hook, if we were to now go back to our sub page, we can, um, we will see that we should no longer get that uh, error where the server and the client have different um, class names. So you can see here it, it rendered the, the button and its background color is red as expected. So yeah, that's pretty much all you really got to do to make sure that Material UI is set up and ready to go with uh, Next.js. One more thing, one more question that might come up is like, if we add this get initial props to the document page, won't that make it so every single uh, page that we have is um, server side rendered? And that's not necessarily the case. Um, pages that still don't require server rendering that don't include server side props or get um, initial props will be uh, statically optimized and client rendered or pre rendered during the build. And the way that I can show you that that's being done is I went ahead and created a static sup class or page very similar to sup. The only difference is that this page does not um, export the get server side props, meaning that it should be. Um, rendered on the client or pre-rendered. So then if I were to go ahead and like I just ran the next build, I can go ahead and show that in our server pages, here you can see that the static sub page is still being uh, pre-rendered into an HTML file. And the sub page that exports that get server side props and is server side rendered only exports uh, normal JavaScript files. So that's just kind of to answer that question in case um, you were wondering if that's the case. So you don't have to worry about that. So you still get all the benefits of Next.js where you can specify whether to pre-render or to server side render, which is really, really nice. And yeah, that's it. Um, there's nothing really else that you need to do um, in order to get material UI. So you should be good to go. And if I miss anything, please let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, um, and subscribe as well. I hope that uh, I can make some content to help you guys out. I know that this took me a little bit of time to uh, really understand when I first started using Material UI. So I hope that this is able to help you guys out. And 
yeah, thanks again for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.